Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and now continuing the topic from the previous discussion. So today we see the periodic square wave. We started the discussion with a question that is it possible to represent all periodic signals uh, in, in you know that uh, Fourier series representation. So the answer we got was an ideal no because we saw some signals we could not represent. But practically, you know, I said that all useful signals can be represented as a what? As a in terms of a Fourier series representation. Now, uh, one of that useful signals is this periodic square wave. Now, if I've written this, so you don't need to focus on this. Okay, we'll come to this. But first of all, have a look. Start with me. Consider the periodic square wave. This is an important signal, an important signal used widely. It has wide applications. You've studied the courses of digital logic designs, microprocessors, and uh, somewhere in electronics as well. So this is an important, very important signal. The question is that does it have a Fourier series representation? So we'll come to that later. Fourier, you know, Fourier of course said that it has a Fourier series representation. But other scientists would not agree to this. Why? Because of the discontinuous nature of the signal. The scientists were of the idea that the Fourier series would only exist for continuous signals and not for discontinuous. So, what do we have? We start the discussion with a scientist named Michelson. Michelson was a scientist who had constructed this machine, a device called as harmonic analyzer. He constructed a device known as harmonic analyzer. What was the job of this harmonic analyzer? It, it would give you the finite Fourier series representation of any periodic signal applied to it. So you apply a periodic signal into it, it will give you the finite Fourier series representation. And in this, uh, you know, uh, the n, for finite we need n. So the finite, uh, so this n could range from to, till a maximum of 80 in this particular device. So now when Michelson applied different signals uh, to this uh, harmonic analyzer for continuous signal results were accurate and they were according to Fourier. Fine. So whatever Fourier had said, this harmonic analyzer gave us the same results which were accurate. But for discontinuous signals results were strange. The book has written the word strange over here. For this continuous signals, the results were strange. Now, how were they strange? How were they strange? So, if I give you this is the Fourier series representation of one of the block of this periodic square wave. And I've drawn it from before because this takes quite some time. So, and now this red color, this red color is the Fourier series representation for the value of n equal to 3, okay? Sorry, for n equal to 1. This is for n equal to 1. If you expand only on one term. The green, the green is for n equal to 3. The green is for n equal to 3. And the blue is for n equal to 7. 7 or 9, let me check. Yes, it's 7. So this is, you know, the this sort of a graph you get when you, you, you give it to the Fourier, uh, this uh, harmonic analyzer. So this was what you was getting for different values of n. Now I've drawn them on the single graph. The book has shown it on different graphs so you can see it from here. So now you can see that we have got ripples. We've got ripples. So questions were arise. The first question is ripples. The second question is have a look at the amplitude of the ripples. So I would write the second question is the ripple amplitude. Okay. We have got some amplitude, right? So that was another question. How would it be? What would it be? Fine. And the third is the behavior at the point of discontinuity. What is the point of discontinuity? This particular point. First it is 0. Then it is 1. 
this is 0 over here, this is 1 over here. So this black I have shown one block, right? So, so the, 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 the other question was the behavior at point of discontinuity. So these were some questions that Mitchelson had in his mind and he says that the results were strange and he was unable to explain this phenomenon. What did he did? He presented his ideas, his this question to this scientist Josiah Gibbs, whatever you pronounce it. Josiah Gibbs, I say it is Josiah. This is the scientist he presented his questions to. And after analyzing his questions, after analyzing his questions, what did he do? He gave his theory on this question. The Gibbs phenomena. It's known as the Gibbs phenomena. So he, so he basically explained this particular phenomena, what is happening. For n equal to 1, it's like this. For n equal to 3 is the green color. For n equal to 7 is the blue color. What basically is happening? The first, truncated Fourier series approximation. Why a truncated Fourier series approximation? Because we are not taking our n from a negative infinity to positive infinity. We are taking some finite values of n. So when you have the summation limited to a finite value, I told you that is called a truncated Fourier series. So truncated Fourier series approximation of a discontinuous signal, and this is a discontinuous signal, x of t will result in general exhibit. They will exhibit what? High frequency ripples. So these are your, see it has some frequency, it, these are ripples. Now high frequency, why are they using it? So I will tell you. High frequency ripples, you understand ripples, and overshoot near its discontinuity. Overshoot, what does now overshoot mean? Overshoot means that the ripple amplitude is above. It is overshooting more than the, the value of the original signal. So this is the first point. Fine. Now high frequency, why? Because it has a higher frequency. As the number of n would increase, it would have more and more frequency. n increases, the frequency increases. Fine. This was the first point and we see it over here. This clearly implements over here. The second is the peak values of the ripples. The peak values of the ripples, although I have not drawn them properly, does not increase with the increasing n. So the amplitude of the ripples will not increase with the increasing n. For n is equal to 1 the red color, n is equal to 3 the green color, the amplitudes are same, although not properly drawn over here n is equal to 7 they are the same so whatever be the number of n the amplitude of the ripples would be the same this is the second point implemented over there the third the overshoot the overshoot is what this the 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 overshoot is this particular thing, you know, the, the amplitude that is above the discontinuity. This is known as the overshoot. The overshoot is always 9%. The overshoot is always 9% of the height of the discontinuity. So this particular thing is always the 9% of this particular thing. So we mean that our height of discontinuity is 1. If this is 1, so the overshoot would be what? It would be 0.9. Overshoot in this, our particular example, this would be 0.9. Isn't it like this? No, so, so this is not 0.9, it's 0 0.09, okay? So, so this overshoot is always the 9% of the height of discontinuity. So our height of discontinuity is 1, so the overshoot would be 0 0.09, which makes the total height, the total height would now be 1 plus that overshoot, so 1.09 would be now the total height of this thing. Fine. This again is implemented. The fourth. As n increases, the ripples will compress towards the point of discontinuity. And this again is not properly shown over here. As you increase the number of n, what do you get is that your ripples 
compress towards the point of discontinuity which means that in the middle you get a less number of what happened nothing in the middle you get a less number of what a less number of ripples so if this was for n equal to 1 now what would happen is that you would have uh, the next is the green color so in the middle you might have less number of ripples fine then again if you have another blue color so in the so in the middle the the, the ripples would decrease in the middle the ripples would decrease and they would compress to the left side of the discontinuity and to the right side of the discontinuity it would reduce in the middle the book has proper images for this this is point number four number five at point of discontinuity at point of discontinuity what happens is the finite Fourier series converges converges means what comes to a single point converges to the average value of the original signal x of t at either side of the discontinuity <coughs> So, now what is my point of discontinuity? This is my one point of discontinuity. This is my next point of discontinuity. So, now we are talking at the behavior at this particular point. So, what will happen is that at the point of discontinuity, the Fourier series representation will converge will converge will come to one point and that is and that point is what? That point would be this one and this one and what is the value of this at this point the value at this point is the equal to the average value of the original signal at either side of the discontinuity so at the left side of the discontinuity over here i have zero at the right side i have one the average of these two would be 0.5 so this amplitude is again not properly drawn this is 0.5 it should be a little higher Similarly over here to the left side of discontinuity you have 1, to the right side of discontinuity you have 0, the average is 0.5 again, so which means that this Fourier series has converged to a single point that is your average value. That's the Gibbs phenomena and this has explained this particular thing like this. Now what happens is if you further increase your n, increase your n and the book has uh, drawn the figure for n equal to 19, n equal to 79. So if you say for n equal to 79 or something like that, so you would have what? This would pass through this. You would have a single ripple something like this some prominent ripples over here and then not prominent we don't have in the middle i told you and then at this particular end you would have these sort of ripples and this is it so have a look isn't it approximating to my original signal it is this black now this is for n equal to 79 and i told you in the middle you don't have that ripples it compresses it compresses as well and the height remains the same and it compresses to left and right sides of the discontinuity which I showed over here so have a look is that it approximating to my original signal if I make n higher and higher and if I turn it to infinity won't it be my original signal it will be so which means what that this discontinuous signal has got a Fourier series representation this discontinuous signal has got a Fourier series representation if I tend my n to be larger and larger if it tends to infinity this is the case, I, the book has shown it till n equal to 79. That's it. Let's see if I have some point in the book. And you can see it on book page number 201 are these graphs, so you can see them uh, properly. Fine. Yes. Okay. However, this n increase the ripple partial sun compressed toward the discontinuity. For any finite value of n, the peak amplitude of the ripples remains constant. Okay. This is I've told you, and I don't have any other point. So if you can see, if you can see, these are the graphs. So let me check if you can see. Yes, you can see. Right? It seems a little blurry, but or let me have a click so it can it focus 
So, so these are the graphs, okay? Fine. Yes. So that's it. That's it about this video. And what what do we have the conclusion? The conclusion is again as we got in the previous video that all useful practical periodic signals have Fourier series. This is a useful signal. This is a practical signal. This although is discontinuous, it is periodic. But the conclusion is what? All practical, useful, periodic signals have Fourier series representation. And with this, I end this video. Till the next video, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And do remember me in your prayers. And do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.